Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with another question for BoatingTechTalk.com. So we've got a fellow boater that has a navigation system on board, um, an autopilot, a chart plotter, and after about a week, um, the chart the chart plotter stopped working. Uh, and talking to the dealer, this owner was said that this damage of the chart plotter could be uh, from high voltage. And the question is, Jeff, how can I protect my electronics from high voltages? Okay. Well, first thing is that nowadays, luckily, the, nowadays, um, the voltage input voltage range for most electronics is pretty wide. Actually, not all of them, but many of them are going to work on both 24 and 12 volts. So you might have an input voltage range from literally 9 volts all the way to literally maybe 30 volts because a charging 24 volt battery is not a 24 volts. It's you could see 28.8 temperature compensated 29. So you're going to have a pretty wide range where this device might work from 10 volts to 30 volts. So the first thing is today's devices, um, again, many of them have a high input range, not all of them, but some of them do. So find out what the range is. Now, if you've got a tight range and your device can only take between 13, from 10 to 14, let's say, or 15, and for whatever reason you have voltage spikes on your boat, um, there are devices, uh, and we've done this, um, that are basically 12 volt in, 12 volt out. Now, you're saying, why would I have something that's an in and the out this thing? Well, it's not literally 12 volts out, so it's going to take whatever input voltage it is. It could be 9 volts, it could be 10 volts, 11 volts, 12 volts, could be even 14 volts. And what it takes is it takes that input voltage and outputs a steady voltage on the other side. So that other voltage might be 13.4, 13.8. And basically, it always outputs 13.4 or 13.8, regardless of what happens on the input voltage. And so those devices are not too expensive, you know, uh, depending, of course, on your currency and where you are. And it might be a couple hundred dollars, two, three hundred dollars. Again, depending on the currency and what's a dollar, Canadian or U.S., of course, big differences uh, depending on markets. But it's not a thousand dollar device. And what you want to do is you want to look to have a device that can handle the max expected current. So if you've got a, you know, uh, let's say this owner has an autopilot, well, how much autopilot can the can it draw? Is it going to be 10 amps, 5 amps, 20 amps? How much is the chart plotter going to draw? How much maybe a radar is going to draw? How much? So you add up all your loads and what your maximum amperage is. And so make sure that when you purchase the device, it can handle maybe a total aggregate load of 30 amps or 50 amps or 40 amps or 20 amps. And generally, you don't want to buy much more than you need because you're ended up paying for more than you need. So you want a size. And so we do this um, type of problem, not as so much to avoid voltage spikes, but to avoid voltage drops. So on boats that might have a flybridge where they're far away from the battery bank and the line loss to get all the way to the flybridge makes the electronics at the flybridge uneasy. What we're going to do is we're going to use a DC to DC converter 12 to 12 and stabilize that voltage. And so it's a good question. You can stabilize voltages for your electronics uh, by doing a 12 to 12 or 24 to 24 to make sure that the voltages are always steady. And if you've got that on board and someone tells you that you've got uh, unstable voltages, well, then you'll know and to be able to turn around and say, well, that's not possible because effectively my electronics are running off a power supply. And if it's running off a power supply, there's not going to be voltage drops or voltage spikes. And so that's one easy thing to remove off the list for troubleshooting. And that's why you might consider putting that device on a boat. Thanks everyone for watching. And if you've got comments on how you use a DC to DC power supplies to even out the voltage on your boat, please share because sharing is caring. And thanks everyone for watching. Appreciate it. So if you're curious again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.